guys, Kevin Mitch here on the Big Head Pod, just sitting down, sitting here thinking about some of the whiskey that we've been been uh, privy to, being a part of the sponsor here on our show, Herman Marshall Whiskey. You guys get a chance to drink this stuff, try it out. The single malt is by far the best one they have. There's four kinds. They have a single malt, they have a blend, they have a bourbon, they have a rye. The order I would go in is a single malt by far. I just found this. Don't ever try and take this from me. I might have to beat you with the bottle. Then the rye, the blend, and then the bourbon. This stuff is phenomenal. Texas made and Texas produced here, guys. This stuff is unbelievable. So if you get a chance to do it, go grab yourself a bottle. This stuff is amazing. Welcome to another edition of the Big Head Pod here on the Dub Network. My next guest is one of four brothers, played in the NFL. NFL took him to an entrepreneurial ship to where he is today. And without further ado, Mr. Chris Gronkowski. Chris, how are you, brother? Hey, what's going on, man? I like that. You said four brothers. I was like, man, there's five of us, but you know, one of them played baseball, so he didn't he didn't make it to the NFL. So and that's you know you know and being around you guys for the last few years with the uh, with the celebrity softball that TK's put together and and seeing your interactions that you guys have um, I had two brothers old I was I was the baby where do you fall in this pecking order Yeah man so I'm actually uh, I'm the middle of the five so I'm number three Okay so you were destined it always seems like the third one is destined to be the elite because you you know you you've picked the first two brothers to see what you want to do. So who's the oldest? Gordy? Yeah, or Gordy's. Rob? It's Gordy, Gordy's yeah. So it goes Gordy, Rob, and then you? No, so we got Gordy, uh, our brother Dan. Okay, Dan's yeah, in there. Okay, A part of the celebrity uh, classic yet, but um, and then me, and then Rob, and then we have the younger brother Glenn, who's been there as well. Okay. So that's, so I, I mean, I can't even imagine what it was like in your household growing up. I know as me being the baby, my brothers used to abuse me. I was put in a hockey goal with catcher's gear only, and they're 10 and 14 years old than I am. So I was, it was one of those where you basically had to take it as a kid. So, you know, so growing up a little bit, like you talk about you guys, what was the sport of choice or was it just what everybody wanted to do that day? Yeah, man. So we, I mean, we're from Buffalo, New York, so the sport was definitely hockey and baseball, uh, but grew up playing a lot of hockey. Uh, we liked it because you, know, you could hit people. You learn how to hit. You know, on skates, it's even more intense. Uh, so a lot of hockey, and then after that, it was it was just pickup games. You know, backyard baseball. Uh, we played mini sticks uh, in the basement, or at least that's what we called it. Uh, you know, you take like the little plastic sticks that you're supposed to hang on the wall. You put them in a, a hot, uh, you know, boiling pot of water, and you curve the the stick, and you go in the basement, and you know it's an all out battle. You know, full checking and uh, two on two games. So. Played a lot of uh, mini sticks growing up as well, but really anything all day, every day was a competition and uh, always ended in a brawl, like had to end the day with at least one fight. <laughs> that's that's what it seemed to be where, you know, it's it's the competitive nature, right, that, that your brothers bring out in you to want to be the best, right? I always wanted to be better, you know, if they were doing it, I wanted to be better than they were. So what did I need to do? So you guys had that dynamic from i mean what's the what's the age difference from from gordy to uh to glenn so 10 years total so we're all about two years apart wow oh my goodness so i can't even imagine probably your, your parents just sit back and just say don't kill each other and just go at it that was it man so my dad's rule was um you know no headshots and no uh <laughs> you know <laughs> no shots below the waist <laughs> is how he went about it but uh yeah it was that's how it was if you had a problem cool you know wrestle fight it out do whatever go outside uh and then after that you know we you kind of become best friends after you know you just beat the hell out of each other so uh that was kind of their their philosophy you know go outside get that energy out fight if you need to and get back in and uh you know come come eat your dinner <laughs> it's kind of what it was like and it, and it did it help create a better bond i mean we, you know we talk as athletes you see the teams that succeed are the teams that can fight with each other but know that they have each other's respect and backs to move forward. I mean, is that where that kind of was established in you guys at that younger age? Should we help you to get where you guys got to today? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you see it over and over. You know, the guys that kind of hate each other the most at first, uh, it's usually because they're the most similar and the most competitive. And once they have it out for each other, they get in a little brawl. You know, same with the football field, same with the locker room. You know, you, you have a lot of respect 
uh, for them afterwards. And you end up being, you know, good friends and really supporting each other. So that's how we were, you know, growing up, it was all out brawls all day, every day, uh, doing whatever we could to, you know, get on each other's nerves or make the other brother look bad. And then as we got older, you know, it kind of just turned into respect. We started playing on the same teams together. We started playing, uh, you know, together, hitting guys, you know, blocking guys off the line together. And it kind of just became the ultimate bond. So uh, at that point, you know, went to college together. Uh, some of us played together in the pros as well. So uh, just one of those bonds that always took you to that next level as well, because I wanted to get into the film room and say, hey, bro, you know, watch this next play. You know, watch what happens here kind of thing. And at the same time, you know, with your brother in there watching you on film, you didn't want to look bad either. You know, you wanted to play the best you could to, to kind of, you know, one up your bro or kind of impress your brother. So I always love playing on teams with my brothers because it always took us both to that next level. So where did you guys pl end up playing together? Was it in New England? Uh, so I played together. I actually went to the University of Maryland first, played with my brother Dan uh, for two seasons. I transferred and I played with Rob for two seasons at Arizona. Uh, as brothers in the NFL, uh, Dan and, and Rob played together in New England. And then uh, Glenn and Rob played together in New England as well. So that was the uh, I was the one that was left out. I think we got a little too crazy in college for Belichick to uh, allow me to come into New England. So you talk. So Gordy was a baseball guy. I mean, Buffalo, New York is not a baseball play. I mean, you think about it. Snow. I grew up in the Northeast in Delaware, so we had four seasons. Right? We played. I played soccer in the fall. I wasn't a, my school wasn't known for football. I played soccer and then hockey in the winter and baseball in the spring. So how did I mean? How did Gordy end up on the baseball path? Right. And then three of you playing football. And then wasn't Glenn the hockey player? No. So Glenn, uh, he, he played football as well. We all played hockey. Um, okay. Really up until high school. But for us in Buffalo, uh, once you got to the high school level, if you were still playing hockey, it was almost like one of those sports where, you know, you only played hockey. Uh, they were going to make sure that you were playing all the travel teams and you're playing year round. So uh, we like playing everything. We like being athletes. Uh, I didn't play basketball, but all the other brothers played basketball as well. Uh, I stuck more in the weight room uh, in the off season between football and baseball at that point. But um, yeah, it, it was, and like, that's how it was. Like you only, you only played baseball for like three months because it was snowing the rest of the months. You get it in. Uh, we started doing trips down to Florida uh, early on in the year to, to try to get at least a little bit longer of a season. But um, you know, it was hard to get recruited out of there as well. My dad did a great job with us of you know, allowing us to go to camps it would get as many eyeballs as, as they could on us. And um, he also uh, just knew the recruiting process. You know, he did it himself. He took a Greyhound bus around the nation uh, when he tried to get recruited and ended up with an offer from Syracuse. So uh, he kind of knew the ropes. He knew what we had to do to get in front of the coaches. And uh, he did everything he could to kind of help us out if, if we wanted to do it. So uh, baseball was tough. He got him down to Jacksonville. He took a, a you know almost like a countrywide tour with my brother to visit every college possible. Uh, ended up at the University of Jacksonville. Uh, for me, you know, similar similar thing, you know, one or two scholarship offers to lower level schools. The only D1 offer was the University of Buffalo, but um, just kept pushing and kept getting in front of coaches and uh, got a last minute scholarship offer from Maryland, mostly because of grades and other guys failing out. So uh, definitely a tough place to play out of, but man, you keep grinding and you put the work in and you, know, you have the talent, you're, you're going to eventually be seen. Yeah. So, so was your dad? Was he a football player growing up? Or was he, a, or was he a hockey guy growing up? What was, what was your dad's f sport growing up? Yeah, so he, um, you know, played a lot of baseball as well. Played a lot of hockey, but uh, ultimately went to school for football. So he was okay. an offensive guard. Uh, you know, two two eighty back in the day, big dude for that time, and uh, liked to lift a lot of weights. Yeah, so that's where you guys kind of got that from. So did that, your dad ever mix it up with you guys? to kind of balance it out, have three on three, or was it just kind of the three on two scenario going the whole time? Yeah, no, he, um, I mean, we, we mix it up now, uh, more like basketball, cornhole, stuff like that. But, uh, back in the day, he never really got in on the action of, uh, you know, the sports with us. I mean, he, he would have just destroyed us at that point probably. So <laughs> he's young. I mean, yeah, he had, he had Gord when he was, you know, 21 years old. So, uh, you know, younger, younger dad and uh, coaching all of our stuff, coaching all our baseball, our hockey games. So it was it was fun growing up.
Well, that's good. I mean, I've seen I've seen some of the, the interaction you guys have had with your dad on you know through social media and stuff, and the, and the fun that that he has. So so you know, I know Rob seems to be the guy that's the real the the, the jokester, the outgoing guy. Is, is that is that how it's always been, or is it just something that he just kind of developed through playing? Because you know, everybody has their own personality. You seem like you're kind of more of the uh, on the opposite side of where Rob and Gordy are. So I mean, do you see yourself as that way? Yeah, for sure. Uh, he was like that from day one. So he was the one that's always pushing everyone to the limit. Uh, you know, right before he gets called to the principal's office kind of thing, he'd stop doing it. And uh, yeah, it was all about trying to make us laugh, you know, make his brothers laugh, do something stupid to, to see how we react to it. So, yeah, man, uh, he always he always had jokes. He was always doing something crazy and it was always it's always entertaining. So he never really changed. I mean, uh, you think about it, he was 20 years old, got a signing bonus for a couple million dollars and uh you know most people would mess that up he was still going to the complex and bringing home food for dinner uh you know because that's that's how we were raised just earn every dollar uh you know we have 50 bucks in college to spend a month you know find a way to get through scrap it out and uh do whatever you have to do so uh, our parents raised us to really respect uh hard work and respect the value of a dollar yeah, it seems like that's that's something that gets lost a lot nowadays, especially in sports where guys get. I mean, the signing bonuses are just insane, right? The amount of money these they're they're kids, right? They're 20, 19, 20 years yeah. old, given this amount of money, and there's there's no real direction, you know, right? So it's and that's I know they try and create things to help you guys to money management guys too, but there's so many outside factors pulling pulling guys all over the place. So, I mean, what did you experience as far as, you know, you know, once you got into playing, playing football and, and, and that aspect of it? Yeah. With, from the money side of it, um, it, it's funny, man, because, you know, I started my rookie year, I was undrafted free agent rookie. I made the Cowboys team. I started as a starting fullback and, uh, you know, everyone thinks you're making millions. You know, you're, you're balling, you're killing it. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, I, my salary was 305 K, you know, you take probably half of that home. Uh, you have living expenses to pay for as well. And, uh, you know, you're not balling. You're not a multimillionaire. You know, you're not buying your family houses, but you know, mm -hmm. everyone expects it. You know, it's it's hard to just buy, you know, 10 friends tickets to the game because you're still paying for the tickets. You don't get tickets for free. Uh, so I think everyone's perception of it is that every single player is just absolutely balling, but it's just not the case. So, uh, you know, for me, you know, people were, you know, I couldn't really do anything about it because, Really, I didn't have the money to do it anyway, so I wasn't really in that same position that someone uh, that was drafted high would be in, and you know, have that big that big fat signing bonus to to really worry about and have people coming after. So you, when you were uh, you undrafted free agent, you did finish your your four you finished four years, two at Maryland, two at Arizona, correct? Yep. Yeah. What? So I ended up with the degree, and uh, at that point went into uh, you know into the draft, but went undrafted. Yeah. So what was your degree in? Uh, so I ended up getting an accounting degree. So I was one of uh, one of two football players in the entire business school. You have to actually apply to get in. And, uh, you know, I wanted to get I what I thought would be the hardest degree to get. Um, you know, it was free at that time. You know, you're on scholarship. Might as well try to get the best I can. And I figured, man, if anything, uh, I could at least be a CPA and make decent money. So that was kind of the game plan at that point. So, I mean, so a lot of guys, too, once they're playing, they're playing, they're still going to school, you know, still trying to educate themselves, better themselves. Um, and it's it's one of those things where some, you know, some guys do, some guys don't. Was that was that always a part of it to the entrepreneurial ship to, that, to where you are today? Was that something that you were focused on when you were playing or was that just kind of in the back of your mind where football was first and that was it? It was football first. Um, yeah, I wish I had a bigger vision like some guys do. Uh, I always give credit to Pat McAfee. I paid, I played with him uh, 2011 when I was with the Colts. And, you know, he was already forward thinking, man. Like he was already building that audience and engaging with, with the fans while he was still playing, which was really at that time something that no one was really doing. So, uh, but for me, man, like I was, I was locked in only focusing on playing, but, you know, I was also a guy that could be cut any day. So uh, if that focus, you know, wavered at all, I was probably gone um, at that point. So, I knew it wouldn't last long. I knew there had to be a plan B. Uh, the plan B was actually to do players' taxes. I saw an opportunity for that when I got into the league and uh, realized I have an accounting degree and you know, these guys have to file tax in every single state they play in and they've never done it before. And some guys are literally not filing, even though we're all going to get 
big fat returns because they withhold way too much. But, uh, you know, guys just don't know. They don't know what to do. And, uh, you know, CPAs charge a lot for them to do the taxes, which, you know, it's mostly software just doing it for you at this point. So saw a good opportunity there. But um, things changed. Things changed quickly when my wife uh, started her own business after my third year in the league. And doing that. So it, I don't know if people understand that we as athletes have to pay a tax and everywhere we play, every state, the, the, the celebrity tax, which is it's just insane, right? You know, you get 13 different tax returns and, you know, and some of those can be outrageous. Some of the states you get them right. And, and like you said, if guys don't know what they're doing, that money that they have is just is completely gone. So that seems like it was something, like I said, you were focused on to help out. But I mean, even now, are you still seeing guys that still don't understand that process that are playing? Yeah, for sure. I mean, they don't do a good job on really throughout. I mean, I, I think it should be done in high school. You know, you should have to do a tax return in high school or at least in college, uh, especially if you're an accounting degree. Mm -hmm. uh, at least have to do some kind of mock uh, version of, of taxes, which I never did either, um, at least not that I can remember. And then, um, you know, these guys get in the league and there's really no direction for that either. You know, there isn't someone saying – hey, go to this guy, he'll really do a good job because he does it for all the players. It's kind of like, hey, ask your boy or, or someone from you know your hometown or whatever uh, if they can help you out on it. So you just you kind of just scramble and you kind of figure it out on your own, which a lot of times isn't the best way to do it. So uh, kind of surprising that, that they don't give more support in certain areas like that. But uh, I think the, it all comes down to Guys getting burned, people getting burned in the past, though. I know my, my agent, Drew Rosenhaus, did have guys that were financial guys that, you know, he got in trouble with because of bad investing, investing advice. So uh, I, I think they kind of just try to stay away from it. And try and handle it themselves. And it, it's tough, though. You're right, because it's that's all you see now. Guys, just all these schemes and everything. They're taking millions from athletes. Heck, I mean, you're even seeing families, parents taking it from athletes that because they, like you said, they don't trust anybody. So, I mean, so, so as an athlete, what are these guys supposed to do, really? I mean, take it home, tuck it under their sheets, put it under the bed, under the mattress? That's a tough call, man. I mean, my dad, I could I could tell you right now, he saved us multiple times from from people uh, taking money out of the pockets of, of, you know, mostly Rob. You know, not I, I didn't really have to worry about that. But, uh, you know, there's even events where he was doing where, um, you know, it was a, a charity event where he was showing up for free, um, you know, at the one point. He went in the back room and they said, hey, you got to sign these 40 items. And he said, what, what are you talking about? I have an exclusive deal with New England Card at the time. I can't sign anything. And they said, well, it's, you know, it's in your contract. Yeah, we paid for this. And he was like, I'm, this is a charity event. I'm here for free. What are you talking about? And, you know, there's people that were setting up the events that were pocketing six figures on him being there. And he didn't even know it. So, uh, yeah, guys, they'll, they'll come out of anywhere. Um they get super creative on, on different ways to really screw the players over. Oh, for sure. And and then it falls back on 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 your brother just saying, "What time out? I didn't know what was going on." But right then the media spins this. Oh, he, this guy is this. You don't want to be around him yet. And then and they wonder why athletes are so reserved when it comes to having interactions with people because we're not sure what they're what they're actually are. They, you actually here to really concerned about me or are you just looking for something on the back end correct yeah and that's and that's why you stop seeing them go out and they get so reserved and uh they stop sharing you know you see guys early on where they're willing to stay later and help out and show up at events and do charity events and then you know pretty soon uh as they get bigger they start you know kind of getting burned a couple times and they're not willing to do as much because they got to protect themselves so uh definitely a huge aspect of, of why guys you know really stop doing what they started doing in the beginning yep and i could see it too especially i mean with you guys right everybody sees when they think of grunk house they think of your brother right they think of rob as he's the big but at the same time they might be just trying to buddy up to you to buddy up to maybe gordy to just to get a piece of that right so it's and it's hard and i'm sure people look at you and your brothers and go ah, we, you know we, we you're not we don't like you because you, you're kind of reserved in what you do. I mean, have you run across people that have just said, uh, I'm not dealing with you, Chris, I don't want to, because it's, they, it seems like you're coming off one way when you're actually just trying to protect yourself and your family and, and your family name. I mean, it's, it goes both ways. I mean, it definitely helps open doors for me, um, you know, in business for sure. But a lot of times that door gets open because you know, they're, they're trying to get to Rob, like you said. 
you know, uh, they will reach out and, you know, some crazy scheme or a great idea. And really at the end of the day, the whole idea is to, you know, get Rob to show up at their event. It's mm-hmm. like, Hey guys, uh, you know, uh, just because you bought 50 bottles from us, uh, isn't going to get Rob at your event. Like uh, I apologize, but you know, that was never a part of this at all. And, uh, you know, that's, I, I can't make that happen. You know, it's, I, I'm not him. So it's what it comes down to. So a lot of times I just have to tell people straight up, like I'm, I'm willing to help, but you know, that I'm not Rob at the end of the day. So I definitely run into that a lot. Are you guys, I mean, now that everybody's done, done playing, are you guys still as close as you were when you were younger? Now I know you guys are spread out. You, um, doesn't Gordy live around in our area as well? So Gordy's in New England. Um, okay. right. my brother Glenn and I are here in Texas and then, um, we're from Buffalo, New York. So my dad's back and forth between Florida and my brother Dan's up in, uh, in New York, kind of running the family business, um, at this point. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're super close. Um, talk to my brothers pretty much every day, uh, still at this point. Uh, once you have four kids though, it gets a little crazier, uh, and a business to run. So, um, you know, I'm, I don't have that time to kind of just chill and, and fly out and, and hang out. So what usually ends up happening is when Rob comes through, um, you know, he's flying to, to LA, uh, or back to New York or something like that. Um, if he's coming through this way, he'll stop in, you know, sometimes just 24 hours, a couple of days, stuff like that, catch a couple of games with the kids and, uh, and head on to his event. So that's always a good way to catch up. We try to do family things. You know, he's, he gets so many offers and deals and, uh, different events that he's doing. So a lot of times we like to plan on just going to the events together um you know good one was um you know brady threw an event uh last month and we got to go to it and you know rob was on stage playing cornhole versus tom brady stuff like that and just just a great way to get the whole family back together and hang out for an event yeah and you don't skip a beat do you once you get back together you know you just pick up like you were kids i know my brother hadn't seen my brother in about four or five years we got together a few months few weeks ago just you know, you pick up right where you left off doing stuff, being competitive, whether it's pool, ping pong or whatever, just, just doing that. Um, so, so we go to, you know, the end of your career and you start this entrepreneurship. And as I was sitting here thinking, we talk about the interview, I found mine. There we go. <laughs> yes, sir. I found my ice shaker. So the concept of this, explain this to, to, the, to the people out there. When I got this, I was kind of confused as well as how this thing was constructed. And then explain this to me a little bit of how this even came about. I mean, being an athlete, I understand you know, what we need and, and everything else. But explain to me how this whole concept came about. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, I'm, I'm here in, in Dallas, Texas now. And I was, uh, it was a June day. It was probably over 100 degrees. Uh, I was actually using an insulated cup at work. I went home, I grabbed a plastic shaker, I went to the gym. By the time I got there, like it was sweating everywhere. It was all over my cup holder. I was getting it on my shirt. I was putting it down. I was actually making little sweat rings on the gym floor. And I I took a sip and I'm like, man, it's already warm, tastes terrible. Like, why isn't there an insulated bottle that will actually blend, mix, it's easy to clean, uh, easy to fill. And just went home that day and I'm like, I'm just gonna go buy one on Amazon. Like it's gotta be made. Every cool idea you have is already out there, right? So I jump on there and, and I search for an insulated shaker bottle and there's literally nothing out there. I couldn't purchase it. So uh, I was currently already running a business with my wife. I was about five years into it. We were creating products and, and sourcing our own stuff. So uh, I used my same resources and I started making a shaker bottle. You know, I wanted it to, to be insulated. I wanted it to be able to blend and mix powders. Uh, and it, that's kind of how it started. It started as a side hustle for something I was super passionate about, which was you know working out, going to the gym, crushing some weights, crushing protein shakes, and uh, turned into the side hustle, which then turned into a visit to Shark Tank, which then turned into a, a full-time business overnight at that point. Uh, so pretty cool. The product itself, uh, I use it all day, every day. So I, I try to uh, make sure it's, it's perfect because every little thing that isn't, would drive me crazy. So we've actually remade it three times now. Uh, it has a twist and agitator on it that's we're, we're pat- that we patented that will actually break up powders. This uh, piece cool. here, correct? Yep. It'll twist right off. You can throw it in the dishwasher. So it makes it super easy to clean. Uh, with that, though, it will make sure that you're never drinking a chunky protein shake because that the chunks aren't going to get through that. It's going to blend it up. But it also works as a strainer. So you know, ninety probably 99% of the time I'm using it for water. 
Uh, you put a bunch of ice in the insulated cup, it flows to the top. A lot of times it clogs that spout. That agitator will actually work as a strainer. You always get good water flow. And then in turn, people, they like to pour shots with it. Like they like to party with it too. And <laughs> Never even thought about that. I just see the work outside of it. Yeah. And then people start hitting me up and they're like, hey, did you know that it floats in the pool? I'm like, <laughs> that's that's a great fact and and then they're like you know that like the yeti doesn't float in the pool i'm like no i didn't know that but i'm, I'm gonna start using that so pretty cool people start using it all day every day for everything and um really it's just it's just the ultimate bottles what it comes down to you could shake I mean, it you use it for water really use it for anything this is i mean it's a great concept for so so talk about the the whole shark tank idea how is this something that you approach them with they approach you i know it's I've seen the video of you guys all coming out when in this whole yeah. thing, but how did that how did that come about? Yeah, so it's kind of crazy. So I was with the Broncos in 2012, and um, my agent at the time sent out just a, an email blast to everyone on his roster, just saying that ABC Shark Tank's looking for any current or former NFL players. So uh, at that time, I'm like, man, I love this show, but I'm in the middle of a NFL career, like I had nothing. So I started the email, and um, you kind of always just thought about it in the back of my mind. So fast forward almost almost five years later at this point, um, you know, I think of the idea and I'm like, man, I'm going to get on Shark Tank. Like I got to get enough sales so to actually show that this product's legit and then I'm going to hit this email back. So first three months, I got up to about 25K in sales, just hustling, making family buy, going to shows, stuff like that. And uh, at that point, I'm like, there's enough proof of concept here to reach out. So reached out, hit up the email. The girl's like, it was like five years ago. I don't I don't work here anymore. Uh, <laughs> like, luckily, she was still checking the emails because I probably would have just gave up at that point. But um, she ended up forwarding me to the girl that took her job, and she hit me back right away and was like, "Hey, send submit a video. You know, submit a video, and we'll let you know from there." So I did, and they it was it was a ridiculous video. I didn't know what I was doing or how to edit or anything like that. But I can't find it. Like, I, I had to up. You have to upload on this to YouTube, and I, I want to find this video so bad, but. It just disappeared from the internet, but um, submitted it. They liked it. They hit me up. You go went through the whole due diligence process, all the paperwork, and ended up filming. So uh, the show's cool, but what they don't tell you or why everyone runs out of stock is because they don't tell you when you're going to air until two weeks before you actually air. Uh, so you film. You got this. You know, really for me, I filmed in June. It didn't air until October. Uh, so you kind of just have this you know, mysterious time of, Hey, should I stock up on inventory? Uh, you know, am I even going to air, you know, when am I going to air? Cause you know, it's really, you can air between October and all the way to, I think March or April, uh, at that point. So, uh, I took the gamble. I was like, you know, I flew my brothers out here. I know they want the, the additional audience that's going to come in. So yeah, I'm betting pretty much 99% sure we're going to air at some point. So I just start stocked up on inventory the day that we got the deal. Uh, on the show and ended up getting the new stuff a week before we aired. So it almost was perfect timing, but um, yeah, the show's legit. I mean, we exploded. Uh, what people don't tell you is you don't just chill. Um, when your business explodes and it's out of your own house as a side hustle and you have no employees at the time, uh, you put yourself in a position where you're going to be working very long hours for a very long time. So uh, grinded it out really, you know, that whole month just exploded and then had to sit, you know, actually figure out how to get employees and run a business and get a spot and, and do all that as well. So, um, it's awesome. It, it jumped us years ahead. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it's a lot of work. It's an, it's an absolute grind. So you, when you pitch this to your brothers, you know, brothers can be harsh, right? They can have some of the worst comments in the world of, you know, probably stuff we can't say on here. You can't have just the stuff. So, you know, so it, did you pitch it to each one of them individually or is it just like a group call guys? What are your thoughts? Because I, I can just only imagine what some of the comments were originally from your brothers. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. I mean, they probably thought I was the biggest idiot. Uh, you know, just, I sent over this flyer that I made myself like highlighting the product and it's so terrible looking back on it. But at the time I thought it was like the coolest thing ever. Uh, so I sent that over and I'm like, Hey guys, we, you know, I'm going to be on this show. And yeah, I talked to like, talked to my younger brother first who kind of also watched the show and knew what it was about and got him on board first. And then, uh, you kind of had to weave my way through until I got to Rob. And then, uh, you know, he kind of at that point, everyone else was in. So he was like, yeah, let's do it. 
but you got to fly me in first class and I have an event that day. So I got to leave like literally right afterwards. <laughs> like, all right, let's, let's figure this out. So uh, I ended up getting him in. And the best part is like, we close the deal. You know, we shake hands and like, we walk out and he's like, man, that, was, that, that seemed like it was real. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, oh, it seemed like they're really going to give you like actual money. And I'm like, yeah, they are. What do you mean? <laughs> like, this, this is legit. Like, this is real. Like, they're really investing. And he's like, oh, the whole time I thought it was just like for TV. I'm like, well, it, it is. But at the same time, like, they're they're actually investing real money into the company. So, uh, and they did. I mean, not every deal closes. I, I think less than 50% of them actually close. But um, about, Two or three months in uh, of diligence, we we did close the deal. They wired the money in, and uh, they're they're still, uh, or at least Mark is still a part of the company. Rob ended up buying uh, Alex Rodriguez out of the company about two years into it. Okay, that's just like I said. I just couldn't imagine. So that that so all of a sudden now you're just you're going nonstop with this with this business. And this was what 2017. Yeah, 2017. So five years since the anniversary. Uh, been doing this for for six years. You know, full time, all in. Uh, all day, every day at this point. So and it's been, and I mean, so, I mean, when you go and, and go to speaking engagements and, and talk about this and people always, you know, what made, you know, everybody has that moment. You talked about yours was at that, was at the gym that one time at that moment. And then people are at, you know, and, but they don't also understand that too, the perseverance from the football side, right. Of the grind of not knowing, right. I mean, like you said, you're an undrafted player in the NFL. What am I every day is a, Am I still going to be here? Right? There's nothing guaranteed, and everything else. So when you when you sit there and you talk and you hear this younger generation, I want to I want to hey, how do I do that? But how do I not? I don't have to put in the work. And and then do you hear a lot of those comments of I want to do I want to, you know want all the glory, but I don't want to have to put anything into it. So how do you how do you explain that to kids in this generation of it, it's not this? It's not as simple as hey idea Shark Tank millions of dollars. So what do you how do you explain that to people? Yeah, man. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you how many people have told me that they thought of that idea before me. I'm like, <laughs> like yeah, I'm, I'm sure you did. It's it's a pretty simple idea, but to actually put it into motion is, is something completely different. Uh, I mean, I, I kind of explain it to my kids is, you know, if it was easy, everyone would do it. You know, if if it was that easy, everyone would be running their own company. You know, everyone would be a star baseball player. Everyone would be, you know, super jacked in the gym kind of thing. But uh, it's not easy, man. It's a, it's an absolute grind all day, every day. And, you know, to build something of this size, I, I always tell people, they're like, aren't you scared someone's going to come and, and knock you off? And I tell them, you know, I'm, I'm six, six years ahead of them. You know, they would have to, if I continue putting the work in every day, it would take them, you know, six years just to catch up to where I am now. So uh, it's pretty much impossible for them to catch up to me as long as I keep getting better each and every day. So uh, that's how I look at it. Uh, man, if, if you want something great, it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. If it did, like I said, everyone would do it. And there'd be a bit, you know, a ton of people doing the same thing you're already doing. Uh, the stuff that's successful that actually lasts is, is cause you, you put that time and effort and those relationships in and you learn more and more every day. Uh, networking's huge, uh, systems and processes are, are absolutely massive. And, you know, it, it takes time to figure them out. Like you, you, you might think it's going to work right off the bat. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't work at all. And you have to completely change your procedures or your process or, you know, your game plan or the way you incentivize or your salaries that you're doing. So, uh, man, you learn so much every year. And every year I go to my team and say, I cannot believe we were operating like that last year. Like, what what were we thinking? Like, how did we get through that? That's That's crazy to even think that we used to do it that way. And that's because we're getting better and better every single year. And I know, you know, people talk about the, you know, there's always going to be competition, you know, people coming through, they ask you how, well, what do you do about that? I mean, because you know, a lot of people would get scared, right? If it's creating a business, all right, well, they have that idea. All right, well, that's not going to work. Well, then they have this idea. How do you help them get past that part of it of not, right? Somebody, like you said, have somebody had that, I had that idea, but you didn't take it that next step. Or maybe it was the fear, right? Of not being able to succeed with it. But I mean, you think about it. It's as elementary as what the pet rock sold for millions of dollars, right? Like you said, this is an elementary idea, and I just you believed in it. It's something that was instilled in you as a kid, and this is so. What do you tell those that just say uh, uh, it's not going to work? But with those ideas, it's funny, man, because you, know, you all, everyone gets like that, especially the, at the beginning. But um, it's unlimited. I, I, the market's unlimited. I mean, if 
you think about it, we've, we've sold millions of bottles at this point. I could walk down the street from my warehouse and I could ask 10 people if they've ever heard of Ice Shaker. And I'll be surprised if one person says yes at that <laughs> point. So it, it just shows you. It's, it's, there's so much potential and this is just my hometown that i'm talking about i'm not even yep. talking about international at this point i'm only talking about you know the dfw area and, and i'd be lucky if 10 percent of people knew who we were so uh it, it really is i mean if you put the work in you're going to find a way to be successful a lot of times you, you don't even need that you need to actually niche down and, and really concentrate on one area and become super successful there and then just let it grow naturally. Let people talk about you because you're so good or the service you provide was that amazing and different and stood out that they have to tell their friend about you as well. So, uh, man, I I was listening to a, a podcast the other day and they asked, what was the fastest way to grow? And uh, <laughs> the answer from the entrepreneur was Andy Frisella, who runs First Form, a big supplement company. And uh, he said, you know, one person at a time. And they're like, how is that scalable? He's like, well, one person tells another one, so that's two. They tell two people, that's four. They tell four people, that's eight. And, and it exponentially grows like that, you know, that yeah. fast. And, uh, it, and once you start getting up to, you know, 16, 32, 64, you know, then it really starts to explode super fast. So uh, you take care of people, you do it the right way, you provide something that's unforgettable. They're going to tell other people and you are going to grow extremely fast at that point. Yeah. And it's, and that's what it is. People that's, you think it's, it just goes back to anything. It's just like being a coach. If you've changed one person's life, you've done your job that day, right? Because that person goes and tells another person. And then like you said, yep. the, it's a law of multiplication, but people don't think that way. They think right now that, that's it. They don't, they don't see that. So the, so you, you go to these, you know, these, these seminars and talk to talk to kids and, and people that want to do this and, you know what the what's the best piece of advice is that, that you can give these people when they ask like hey chris what do i need to do to succeed how do i push through all the negativity all the doubts yeah man i mean in business um i, I mean i could tell you this first um you you have to have a plan that's that's one thing and i didn't at first but if you want to get to that next level you know if you want to be great i mean even in sports you know you want to be the best possible you have to have a game plan you have to have a schedule you got to map it out you have to have goals set in place as well uh same thing with business you know budget forecast game plan org chart all that kind of stuff uh you don't realize how important it is until you really start to get into it and really grow if you want to scale get to that next level there's got to be a game plan there uh second thing i always tell people like you have to love it like you have to be passionate about what you're doing uh, same thing with sports. You know, you get into it. You see a lot of guys that are very talented. They burn out. You know, they just don't want to be there. Uh, they're not going to get to that next level because they don't truly love the the grind, man. You know, a baseball season's insane. Uh, you know, training for football, it's insane. Waking up early, you know, going through that beatdown each and every day. Uh, and then same with business. You know, there's so many ups and downs. You know, if you don't love what you're doing, you're going to give up on it because at some point you're going to do something stupid or there's going to be a bad deal that falls through or whatever it is and it's going to hurt and you know you might lose a lot of money uh you might lose a big deal whatever it is and if you don't love what you're doing you're going to give up too early and it's not going to be successful you know most businesses now by year five uh we just hit year six and it, it's because i wake up every day excited to still be here and you know just put that work in and as a team we all love winning together and that's that I think that's the beauty. Like you said, you had your brothers around you, even on the athletic side of just of pushing you, right? Of just wanting to make, wanting to be better and doing that. And that's that's the beauty, I think, being an athlete, being able to take that, find somebody around you that can push you to motivate you to to do that. Like you said, if it's something as small as why well, my cup's sweating, I can figure this out. What do I need to do? So I mean, that it's it, great advice that you that that people hear and it's and like you said, it's ever evolving. You're never going to be content with where you are because you're trying to make it to make it better and and just and get and like you said, get the word out. You've only touched what maybe a, a microcosm of what you're capable of doing, and you're six years into this, right? The sky's the limit. So I mean, it's so 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 people moving forward to be able to check check out your products and everything else. Where what do they need to do? How can they follow you and your your story? And, you know, I'm sure people will have questions. Hey, what, hey, Chris, how can I do this? So how can people reach out to you and follow you? Yeah, for sure. So I love answering questions on social. Um, I do a lot of that on TikTok, Instagram as well. Just my name, at Chris Gronkowski. 
Uh, the product itself, uh, iceshaker.com. Of course, we're on Amazon. We're in all the GNCs, vitamin shops, Lifetime Fitnesses, 24-Hour Fitness. Uh, so, yeah, check us check us out for sure. And um, if you get the product, man, hit me up. Let me know. Tag me in it. I'd love to reshare as well. These are, like I said, this is a the great, great product. And I never even thought about the alcohol side of it. But, hey, <laughs> it's whatever you can, right? Like you said, that wasn't the plan. But, you know, who's the who's to say? So, I mean, is there, are there any products coming out that are that – any uh, that are newer with with what you guys or anything you're you're really pushing this year for sure man we always creating something new or at least new patterns or new partnerships so uh we have a new duffel bag we just launched and it's a duffel bag which is pretty cool i use it every day now at this point and i always hated duffel bags but i i don't know i really like this one but um we have a speaker bottle coming it's a partnership with a company called bump box uh so actually it'll twist off you can throw in your golf cart stuff like that as well uh but they make the loudest Bluetooth speaker on the market. So this thing, this thing bumps, even though it's really small. Uh, some really cool partnership we have coming with them. And then um, we have a couple of collabs. Yeah, we, we're actually going to partner up with a company called Pit Viper. They make pretty sweet shades. Yeah, I've seen your brothers wearing them all the time. I don't think I've yeah. seen you wearing them. I've seen uh, Gordy wears the crap out of those things. Every, t every time I see him, he loves those. Yeah, so we'll do a, it's a bundle pack. You know, you buy a shaker, you get the, the pair of pit vipers with it, and uh, pretty pretty excited to launch that one as well. So that will come around in the summer. Gotcha. Gotcha, man. Well, I, I appreciate you jumping on. Like I said, I didn't, I, I never would have, I never thought where this could go. I mean, to be able to, to get to where you are with it. And like I said, man, I, you know, congratulations on how you've, you've pushed through there and succeeded. But, you know, but it comes down to, like I said, how you were raised and the guys around you to help you become what you are so man i appreciate you jumping on here and they like said people will be able to follow you and, and keep up with your story and i'm sure i'll run into you again but since you're busy doing stuff but hopefully i'll see you at the softball game in uh in november this year and we get yeah, maybe we'll update once he... last year uh had had the baby the same day so um i had to take last year off but i'll be back gotcha right and i think gordy was hurt too i hurt his back last year he had back just had back surgery so yeah, that was it. Back too. We'll see. Maybe he may be chilled out on the muscle chugs and um, <laughs> he's going to rehab a little bit better this year. We'll see. <laughs> man, well, I appreciate you jumping on, Chris, and, and we'll be in touch, man. And good luck to you with, with all these endeavors. And like I said, we'll uh, keep pushing these through and everything else, man. So I appreciate it. Have a great yeah, week. Man. Yes, Take sir, care. man. Appreciate it. All right. I can't X out yet. Uh, it says 99 on my end. I know it's got to go to 100. Uh, so the speaker's a little bit smaller because of the speaker. It actually will twist on the bottom. It's uh, It's pretty sweet. So it has threading on it for that version. But uh, yeah, it bumps, man. Like it's... It's loud enough. Like if I had it outside with me right here, I, I would only have it at like 75% volume because it's actually that loud that I, I wouldn't turn it all the way up. You gym? Yeah, like gym, pool. Um, I'll bring it to like, I'll play pickleball in the morning and I'll, I'll turn it on and like jam out for everyone in there. Yeah, at Lifetime, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, tried to invest in it. They wouldn't take outside money. What? <laughs> oh, they're crazy. That place is rocking, man. It is cranking. If, if you no, you so you can rent you can rent um a court per hour if you just if you're just doing court only. I think it's um I think it's forty bucks during the day and then sixty at night. But if you go if you go food with it, then yeah, you're you're paying over a thousand for sure. If you go food, it's it's expensive. It's like, man, I think they were hitting us like eighteen a person or something like that to start. Um, 
for food. Maybe it was maybe it was twenty five. It was up there for. Uh, I was like, I'll just have my team just buy their own food instead of getting it catered. But okay, yeah, it'd be perfect. Yeah, we do it right here uh, in South Bay. So we, we turn it quick too. So usually three business days or less. Uh, so we're off South Lake Boulevard um, in the 114 right there. So do you know where D-Bat's? Yeah, but right across, we're right across from D-Bat. Um, Okay, is that is that right there as well? Yeah. Market loop. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, I got you. I got you. Check that out. Nice. For sure. Oh, no, we're good. Babysitter's over, so it's all good. Uh, so I have a six, a four, a two, and 11 months. Yeah, we're done. Yeah, we got a girl. So we have we have three boys and just had a girl. So. Oh, I appreciate it. Nice. So you're good. Uh, yeah, he's in kindergarten and then pre-K and the other. I am now, yeah. We've been building for three years in South Lake. So um we put him in the South Lake School District because we'll be there in August. We'll we'll move. Yeah. Okay, nice. My employees all have uh, memberships there and go eat the food at Sky Creek. They get like the 50 off if you have a membership, so they go eat like lunch there every day. They love it. And I used to, and then after the first kid, it was almost never. And then after the second kid, it completely stopped. So I have, I mean, I have straight baseball swing though. I'm slice city and I, mean, I can, I can, I'm like a, a bogey to a, you know, like a, I'll shoot like around a hundred. So. Yeah. It's hard for me to get that six hour window at any point. Nice. Yeah, that's that's the move right there. But I just they just gotta get a little older. I mean, it's just we're in the grind zone right now. Man. That's rough. That's just, you're just asking for punishment at that point. Uh so there's only there's eight. My other brother has as well and then the other three don't have any kids yet they're, yeah they're not married and don't have kids yet so especially Gord. Gord's living 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 it up right now man yeah he he thinks he is too i think
we do well there, but um, sporting goods is huge that we don't really tap. It, it drives me insane because I feel like we should be in every Dick's and Academy, and it's like the only locations we're not in. Uh, so sporting goods been tough, and it's tough to kind of tap into the little leagues as well um, because most people buy like the other stuff at Dick's. Dick sends out the 20% off coupon code before the season, and it, it's been tough to kind of crack that market. Um, we do a ton of custom, though, and really where most of our money comes from is the custom bottles. So, uh, you know, golf events like you were just at, like we would make custom bottles for an event like that. Uh, but really anything, companies will come in, they'll buy them for employees, they'll buy them for big customers, they'll buy them for events. Uh, it Really unlimited uses. I mean, they'll even buy them as trophies, stuff like that for employee of the month and whatever they want on it, we could put on it and we turn it quick. So a lot of times it's like, Hey, I didn't buy anything for my employees and I have an event this Friday. Can you help us out? And we're able to get it out the door for them. So, uh, that's where a lot of it comes from because it's bulk, you know, they're not buying one, they're buying a hundred of them or 200 or, you know, uh, what are they selling for? Uh, so we sell them the, the retail on them is 34 99. Uh, so that's what they're at in stores. And then, you know, for custom engraving, we have a wholesale price. Uh, so we, you know, we, we give it to them at a pretty good deal. Um, and then a lot of times, like they're just handing them out for free, which helps really build the brand too. So. Uh, I, th he might've purchased them or I think what we did was trade for sponsorship. I think is what we did. Yeah. I think that's what we did. So yeah, verb is, um, that vacation rental, um, app. But um, I think what we did was we traded, a lot of times we'll trade for sponsorships. So instead of paying like two grand for a booth or something like that, we'll come in and be like, hey, we'll trade you bottles. Uh, or what people will do is they'll get someone like Verb to pay for a bottle sponsorship and then they'll just buy bottles from us. And we'll put their... Wix whisk. Oh, they did? No, I haven't, but I'll I like barbecue. Yep, I should get com. I mean, it's on as well, and I mean everywhere. Well, you'll find. Uh, I'll be leaving next week for GNC uh, conference in Vegas, but um, after that, I don't really have much planned, so I'll be around. No, I haven't. I I know. It's Oh, where you go? Yeah.